Hey, I'm Ben, and we're gonna be talking about taking a custom avatar out of Daz 3D, getting it into close, that way you can use it in any of your projects. So the first thing we wanna do is uh, have Daz Central and Daz Studio downloaded. Uh, if you go on their website, you can download those. And I wanna make sure that I have this Daz to Blender Bridge uh, add-on. So this is something that they offer for free on their website, so make sure that's downloaded and installed. So we're gonna open up Daz Studio. I've got my custom avatar here that I adjusted for um, the specs that I'm looking for. And we just wanna double click on her and we're gonna go up to File, Send to, Daz to Blender. And that is that add-on that I was talking about earlier. And first we wanna make sure that this plugin is installed on your version of Blender. So I've got Blender 3.3 uh, downloaded right now. If you have a different version, you can uh, pull from this dropdown and make sure you select it. If you don't know which one, you can find it in your uh, directory through the custom add-on path, but I know it's 3.3. And I'm gonna click Install Plugin. So that's gonna use the Daz to Blender bridge and find that file on my system and install it into Blender. So it says that the plugin was successfully installed and make sure that you restart Blender if you haven't already and hit okay. And I'm gonna hop over to Blender real quick just so that way I can show you what that looks like. So we're gonna go to Edit, Preferences, and over on our add-ons tab, we're gonna type in Daz, and you can see that it was added on here, and you can just press the little check mark, and you're ready to go there. And close that out, head back on over to Daz, and let's rename this to Genesis Size 18 Tutorial. And you want Skeletal Mesh selected, Export morphs if you've changed any of those settings. So my my lady here, I've changed some of her size. And so we wanna make sure that's selected. Everything else can remain the same and we're gonna hit accept. It'll run through its little thing here and then we will be moving over to Blender. All right, so we got that pop up, everything looks good. Hit okay. Open up that Blender file. We're going to press A to select everything, X to delete and hit okay. You're gonna press N to open up your side toolbar here. And I got quite a few here. The very bottom one for me is Daz to Blender, and that's what we just installed. We're gonna hit Import New Genesis Figure and hit OK. And it's gonna run for just a minute. And that'll bring in that file for us. And you can see if I go to my uh, Cycles render up here that it brought in my armature, it brought in all of the texture files and obviously the model. So the reason I like to bring it into Blender first is the bridge feature seems to be a lot better than trying to export an OBJ and figuring out the right settings to get your morphs. So I always bring it into Blender first. That way I also have a little more customization later on if I wanna come in and make a custom animation or a custom render in Blender, it's already there. Uh, I'm gonna export it from Blender now to get it into Clo. And then I'm also gonna find that directory for all those texture files, show you how to drop them into Clo really easily, and then we can make a final render. All right, so we're gonna have our model selected here. If it's not selected, um, you can just click on it and it'll highlight the whole body there. We're gonna file, export, wavefront OBJ. Now I'm gonna go over to my shading tab here and this is going to take maybe a little bit to load up, but it'll show you your texture files. So really, I don't actually care that much about them. You can see if you click on the boxes in your node editor here that the texture file does show up. I'm just gonna click on this little file, it's open image, and it's gonna give me my file path that shows me where all of these textures are saved. I'm just going to copy this path. I'm gonna open up my File Explorer and paste that path into there and that's gonna give me my texture files where I can find those later. All right, so now that we've exported our file out of 
Blender. We can bring it into Clo, and we're gonna use one of the really simple features that they have here that auto converts it to an avatar. And that's gonna let us use a ton of the tools that are already built into Clo. It's gonna do, it's probably gonna take like five minutes or so, maybe a little longer to run through this whole thing. But once it's done, we can throw those texture files on there and we can use the auto arrangement points. We can use a lot of the animations that are built in. And it's just gonna be super easy to work with while still having all of those body um, restraints that we already made. All right, so now that we're in Clo with our uh, new scene, we're gonna go up to Avatar, Auto Convert to Avatar, and we're gonna navigate to our file where we saved that OBJ file from Blender. Go ahead and hit open. We're gonna choose female, so that way it knows what we're working with. We're gonna leave converting to automatic. I don't wanna select the Clo skin style because it's gonna start to put those texture files onto hers and I wanna do that myself. And we're just gonna do rigging only. I'm not gonna make it size editable. You could if you wanted. And then I'm gonna choose my save path and I'm gonna put it in the same V2 avatar files that Clo already has. And I'm just gonna call it ASTM18 tutorial, hit save. And then we're just gonna hit convert and go grab some coffee or something. All right, so Clo has done its thing. It just gave me that pop-up saying that it is complete. So let's just take a look. All right, we can just hit close. We don't really need to open it. If we go to our avatars over in our library and navigate to her, um, she should be saved wherever you saved her. So um, I saved her in the same file as all the other ones. So if I just click on any other avatar and load them in, um, this is one of the standard ones. And if I double click on the new person we made, she loads in just like every other one. You'll also notice that she's got her arrangement points that we can drape on. She's got her collision boxes and her um, rig set up. So now you can animate her however you want and pose her. And if you go to your poses, you can also double click and it'll auto pose just like any other avatar in the software. So it kind of treats her as a regular avatar that's standard with it. Now let's go through and add our texture files. So that way, if you want to have um, textures, you can. And we're just going to click on our main body here and bring up that explorer that we found. And Daz exports a couple different colors of like kind of skin tones. So we've got A, B, C, and D there. And I'm just gonna do uh, B, I think. And we can just grab, we're gonna start with our base body color and drag that to texture. Uh, there aren't actually normal maps. They do um, bump maps or like height maps. So that's what kind of this first one is with the the on it so we're just going to drag that under displacement actually we're going to change our type to skin render only and that gives us our sub scattering um, our subsurface scattering which is kind of that like skin tone that goes through and sort of gives like that glow and there's um, a sub scattering surface shader as well a map for that so we're going to drag that into the mix map so we're going to go through and do that for every single part of her her arms legs neck head uh, there's even eyes and I'll, I'll show you the eyes here first because they're a little bit tricky because there's multiple parts here so first we're going to select the kind of outer eye here and we're gonna scroll to opacity and we're actually gonna bring the opacity all the way down on that because there is another one below it and that's the one that we're actually gonna put the uh, color on. So if you select the first one and bring the opacity down, the second one is now gonna be selectable, which is what I have selected now. And then we're gonna start dropping in these texture files. So we're gonna do the color there and now they should start showing up. So before they wouldn't have shown up. All right, so we've got that one all set up for at least color. Let's get the color in here and then we'll come back with the normal maps. I'm gonna do the same thing. The first one that you select, we're gonna bring that opacity down to zero, deselect it, and then select that new piece. 
And that one we're gonna drop our color into as well. Base color, drop it into the texture file. And now we can see it showing up there. They're all kind of the same texture files. And then each one of these is gonna get a normal map. So that's that iris, this iris depth normal map. And we're just going to drop that into normal and select each one of these and do the same thing. All right, each one also has a um, depth map. So that's what this B kind of height map is. And we're just gonna bring that into displacement. Now you've got this, um, it's the little like tear duct in your eye. So it's this tear opacity here. Drag the map into here. We'll move on to the rest of the skin. So we're just gonna kind of work through these real quick. All right, so now you've got your textures all set up and she's ready to go. Uh, for hair and things, I usually use hair cards that I've downloaded and used and made in Blender. Uh, but you can download or use the ones from Daz as well using the same exact steps. Or you can um, you know, use the ones from Clo and, and work to, to get those assigned to this avatar. I'm just gonna leave it as is right now and drop some hair cards in for my final render. You can go ahead and double click the whole avatar, go to file, save as avatar, and save over that um, one that we made and go ahead and hit save, replace, and that will save with the texture file. So if you, again, go ahead and open someone else and then reopen her, she will now have all of her texture files that we just went through the effort of adding and still has everything else that you need. So I'm gonna just play around here, throw something on and do a quick render so you can see, and that should finish it out. All right, after some tweaking and a little bit of uh, rendering, we are done. You can kind of see everything to get a model from Daz to Blender into Clo and have it as a custom avatar and still be able to use all the tools that Clo has to offer. So uh, if you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what else you want to learn about. Thanks.